Now once we know what the WebLogic server is, we will go ahead and see some of the terms which are being used in WebLogic server. So, so, so we will just go ahead and study about domains, server, there are two types of server, admin server and managed servers, and clusters, node managers and machines. Once we are done with all those uh, terms, then we will go ahead and see the configuration files and administration tools and sample configuration schemas. So what is a domain? Domain is a logical related group of WebLogic server instance that you manage for a single set of configuration artifacts. So in the other words, we can tell that a domain is a basic administration unit for WebLogic server instance. So when you install WebLogic, you have to create a domain, and a domain will have uh, what will have servers, and or you can have clusters of servers. So once you create a domain, the one thing which is the most important is that a domain will have an admin server. You cannot create a domain without an admin server, but a domain can have Manage servers, or you do if you don't want to have managed server, you can go ahead and don't have managed servers. So, there are some of the few rules which you have to follow. All WebLogic server instance within the same domain must be at the same major and minor version. So, if you're working 10.3.6, so all the servers which are there in your uh, in a particular domain should be on the same version and same maintenance pack level. So when we will install WebLogic, we will see what is this maintenance pack level and what is this server major and minor version. So let me go ahead and talk you about tell you about servers. What is a server? Server is a configure configured instance to host your application. So server are the one in your domain where you will host your application where you will deploy your application so so which type of application we can deploy we can deploy web application enterprise application and web services application we can create resources like jdbc resources jms resources diagnostic resources so there are basically two types of servers there in a domain there are one is administration server second is managed server so what is a administration server? So admin server is something which controls the configuration of your entire domain. So it, a particular domain will have only one admin server. You cannot have multiple admin servers in a domain. It's like the same like in a cricket team you will have only one captain. You cannot have more than one captain in a team. If you have more than one captain in, in a team, your team will be imbalanced. No one will, mm, there will be an imbalance in your team. So in the same way, in our uh, WebLogic server domain, we will have only one admin server, so who, which will take care of all the configuration parts. So what all, what all things uh, admin server do? It will host the admin console. It is a GUI part which we will see in a browser. That is known as administration console. So we can start and stop our servers. Like we can start and stop our managed servers from this administration console which is again governed by admin server. So we can migrate our servers from one server to another server within a domain by using the admin server. We can deploy our application using admin server which is the one which will take care of all the configuration. So there are few guidelines which you have to follow means uh, they are the rule which are there. So as I told you earlier as well there must be exactly one admin server in a domain. You cannot have more than one admin server in a domain. And admin server contain or control only one domain. You you can if you create an another domain, that another domain will have its own admin server. So a single admin server cannot control multiple domains. 
and for production use we recommend not hosting your application on administration server you can deploy your application on admin server but it is not recommended when you are doing it is on a production you should create a managed servers and then you should deploy your application on managed server not on admin server you should leave admin server to take care of the configuration part so the admin server does not need to run at all the times but it is required to make configuration and deployment changes to a running domain so what does this line means you can stop an admin server because our application will be deployed on managed servers and managed servers are the one which will be serving our request so but if you need to change any configuration of anything or in a particular domain so at that particular moment your admin server should be up so let us see this diagram see there this is a particular domain which have uh, one admin server and this config.xml is the file which is the one which uh, which maintains which admin server maintain for all the configuration so there are three managed servers as well and uh, we can control all the managed server from this particular admin admin server so when you hit uh, when, and what is this admin console when you hit in the browser you will get a admin console which is hosted again on admin server you will get it and from here you can control all the other managed servers so now let me talk about managed server okay, what is a managed server it is a running instance that hosts our application and resources needed by the application so it is the real workhorse in web logic domain so we will create a managed servers and we will deploy our application and create resources for our application on a managed server so that it's it is separate from admin server admin server will take care of configuration managed server will take care of our our request each managed server is independent of other managed server in a domain unless they are clustered so all the managed server which are which we create in a domain are stand alone managed server but if we cluster them then it will become a clustered so so there is no constraint of uh, how many number of managed server you want in your uh, domain it's only depend upon your uh, hardware if your hardware can support 10 managed servers you can go ahead and create your managed server so first you should check the compatibility with your hardware and then you should create a managed server and how much request it has to serve individual managed server are typically added for capacity and application isolation so you can add any managed server and deploy your application there and your uh, capacity will be increase your application capacity will be increase so now we will see Uh, admin server to managed server interaction how these managed servers and admin server interact with each other so the admin server is store the master copy of your domain configuration that is the config.xml file will be stored by the admin server which will take care all about all the configuration part so whenever so whenever our managed server starts what it does it contacts is our admin server and which is a local copy of our config.xml so our managed server also have a local copy of that config.xml so whenever 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 our managed server starts it synchronizes its config.xml file with the admin server so what you do you you do some changes when one managed server was down so whenever the managed server whenever you start the managed server which was down at that particular moment the managed server will go and contact admin server and then it will take the newer version of our config.xml and it will copy it in our local local file system or uh, whenever if, if whenever you change any configuration from admin servers 
whenever you change any of the configuration for your domain and your managed servers are running then whatever admin server do is it sends the same the changed configuration file to all the managed servers so that they can have the new configuration with them 